Hello and welcome to this quick Game Guru tutorial. This one is going to be about scripts. I'm not going to dive too deeply into them. I know not everyone wants to code, but I just want to show you how the AI works, specifically with the melee scripts that control the zombies. So if you added a zombie into your level, you are going to be using the melee AI script. Now I've created a simple level already, as you can see, I'll just zoom in. There's a nice bit of floor and some crates and a start marker. And what I want to do to add to this scene is some zombies. And there are some by default. If you go into character zombies folder, I will choose slow zombie four and we will drop in five, ten of these guys. And I'm just going to hit run. But before I do that, I just want to pop into the properties and show you it's using AI underscore zombie walk three dot lower. That is the script that is assigned to all of these 10 zombies. And so if I run no, I'm going to actually show you what the default behavior is. So as you can see, they're there looking away from me, standing in the distance. But if we come on to uh, debug visuals, you'll see that all the cones of sight are facing away from the player. They won't react to the player, they can't see the player. So the way you can fix that, if you want your game to have sort of zombies that can see behind their heads, uh, are just uh, sensitive to wherever the player is no matter what, what you can actually do is go into the zombie properties and change view cone angle to 360. That will give them 360 degree views all the way around their heads. So we're just going to drop in a clone of that new zombie and now when we run you'll actually see that the zombies will be able to detect the player straight away. So that was uh, a very simple way in which you can get zombies to be completely aware of you right off the bat, which I imagine you would want to do in your games. But this tutorial is really going to be about these scripts. Now I'm going to look at this one, AI Zombie Walk 3.lua, and if we go to the script bank folder and look for that, you'll find it here about, there it is, Zombie Walk 3.lua. And you'll see that it actually links in with a script called Combat Melee, which is here. And you'll notice that Combat Melee links in with a script called Combat Core. Both of those would actually be located in the AI folder. That's where they live. Now, the reason I'm calling this up isn't to do a big deep dive into how to code and create scripts. I want to show you the additions that I made and I'm going to upload uh, so you can get a better sort of uh, mob behavior going on with the zombies. Whereas before they acted more solo and they kind of used a lot of the logic from say the soldier script. And so what I've decided to do in order to create more of a sort of a zombie feel about this particular behavior is I've changed this function call which used to be called hunt because it was sort of like you know hunting from a distance and that sort of stuff to home in where they'll basically try and walk right up to you before they start attacking and this is a new function that I've created and I've created it inside combat core like so all I did I copied up all of the hunt function stripped most of it out and left the two pertinent things when you first want to start walking you actually set the state to move and then you set up your animation make sure it loops over and over and over reset the animation speed modulation and then when you're in this state when you're in the move state it will actually calculate a target that the AI is going to move to and in order to make it interesting this is an nice aspect of code instead of just moving straight to the player's exact XYZ position within the world so they all try and Diver, um, sort of converge on exactly the same po point, same coin on the floor. Uh, it actually does a little trick. It takes the entity index of the AI bot, which is always different, usually incremental if you've dropped all the zombies down at the same time. So it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then it, it uses that variable inside this, which actually calculates the X and the Y offset 
and the offset in this case is 50 in every direction off that center position. So essentially it creates a ring of coordinates around the player and then it designates that one of the AI bots should go to one of the positions on that ring around the player. So, you know, there's no convergence and it actually makes it good because the zombies can then surround the player. So it's a nice little touch. And then finally we hand over that coordinate to the move and avoid which is a, is a core feature and actually is used in a lot of the scripts including the soldier one. So that's all the addition really was. It was switching out hunt to a home in one and a much reduced function. So if you were wanting to get into AI scripting and wanting to understand a little bit more about the current AI system then this is a nice function to sort of play with because it means you can sort of change the coordinates where the AI goes to, maybe change the animations that are playing. You can do a lot of modding within this sort of little function. So with those two in place, I will actually be uploading these as an update so you can get access to them. And if we go back and confirm, yes, it's AI Zombie 3 War, which of course links to those aforementioned. And we run it for a bit longer, you'll actually see how they work in the new home in logic. So obviously they've got views of 360 degrees around the head, so they're all pretty much interested. So as I move around these crates, with the old system they run to the coordinate that they last saw before they actually took action. The homing one continually updates their target, so as you move they adjust their targets. If I go to the debug view, you see all these lines? These are all the latest paths that the AI bots are calculating to sort of figure out how to get you. And they'll always choose the shortest path. They're pretty clever about avoiding static objects in the scene. As you can see, some are coming from this direction, some from that direction. And if I let them attack me... So, as I say, I let them attack me. The idea is that they surround me. They're not just all trying to pile in on the same coordinate. They've all got slightly different coordinates. That's why they look spread out when they're approaching me. Headshots. Always a good idea to use headshots on zombies. Well, on any character, really. So that's a brief introduction on how to get your zombies to have eyes at the back of their head and which function actually controls the homing in. So you can actually play around with that if you want to. But it's also uh, good to know that you can just drop in a bunch of zombies and they just spring to life and start being zombie-like. For example, if I drop in... Now remember, these don't have the 360 degrees cone of sight, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then we run again. We'll have 20 zombies in our game. Okay, so remember, these guys can see us right away, because they've got eyes at the back of the head. Those cone of sight is all facing that way. But all I've got to do is either make a noise, bang! They're definitely listening to that. And as soon as I get within their corner of sight, and you'll notice that these zombies are much faster. Uh, you've got the slow zombies, and then you've got these fast zombies. Their attacks are quite slow, but they'll move very, very fast. And as you see, they're using the same homing logic, where they're trying to attempt to surround me. So there's one there, one there, one there, one there. And of course, while you're busy fending off the fast ones, the slow ones are creeping up on you. <laughs> Anyway, there you go. So you want a zombie game? Well, there it is. That's a little bit of a background on what scripts are being used, uh, which specific part of the scripts you can use. Um, but I imagine most people just want to drop lots and lots of zombies down and then run for your life. So I hope this was a little bit insightful. Of course, if you've got any questions, you can use the usual channels, being the Steam discussion board, the Game Guru forum, of course, our live agent system, or a direct email to me if you happen to know it, and it's pretty well publicized. So until the next tutorial, I hope this was useful to you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.